like because they years years ago they were talking about how there was going to be a booster gold um blue beetle buddy comedy movie and i thought that would have been really interesting because booster gold is from like the far future and yeah. blue beetle is just a, like a kid that just got this blue scarab so be interesting to, i don't know just do more weird char- like characters that nobody like really <clears throat> knows about or cares about rat king movie <laughs> rat king um Sandman, who's literally a guy with a gas mask and uh, shoots people with gas that may puts them to sleep. So, yeah, just <clears throat> especially with James Gunn now, you think you would think that hopefully they do more weird characters. Oh yeah, James Gunn loves those weirdos. <laughs> Weasel. Super Media Runners. Welcome to Super Media Runners. We run the media to you. I'm Jarek. I'm John. And today we're going to talk about our top five live-action DCU movies, especially with the release of the Blue Beetle movie coming out. So we figured uh, let's talk about these movies that are no longer part of the extended universe. I mean, what, what are they doing now? I, I don't care. They kind of rebooted everything with Flash. Yeah. They're probably going to do a little bit more of that in Blue Beetle just to kind of get it out of the way. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's And then Aquaman, The Forbidden Kingdom still coming out, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which I heard is like, they should just, they should just stop. Because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense now with James Gunn. That's what I was saying, right? Because like, unless I, they want to keep that DCEU going, which they don't, so I don't know. It's kind of pointless to come out now. They they could wait like maybe five years, save a bunch of money, and then do it. And well, that sounds what they're doing with the Superman movie because it's coming out in twenty twenty six. So twenty twenty six, dude. <laughs> So fucked up. <laughs> and then the Batman 2 is not coming out until 2025, which is its own separate thing. And plus these strikes and stuff. They're going to hold it off. Biggest it solution. Just make whatever the fuck you want. Don't make it a universe until you have something that's solid. Yeah. Just throw things at the wall. Until it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> until it sticks. Like, because that's what they do. I mean, Marvel just got lucky in that Iron Man did really, really good because it was Dude, a really, you really well crafted Iron movie. Man flop. That'd be crazy. We would not. We would never get another superhero movie again. Right. So the rule is, it's live action DCU movies that have come out up until Blue Beetle. So anything is fair game. So John, my number five is The Flash, which is, uh, you know, just recently came out. Mm-hmm. And out of all the movies that you know, I feel like had heart, had some kind of decent action in it. It's really good. But obviously, the the stuff that's really really bad. Is really really bad. Like the CGI. I didn't really mind it. A lot of the nonsense with like time travel and stuff like fun, that. It was a fun movie, I thought. Yeah, I, I think overall it was a fun movie. That's what I liked, and I think when it was emotional and it, it had some good highs and really really low lows, but I think overall it is one of the best DCEU movies that came out because trust me, all the sequels and spinoff movies that have come out of this have not been good, and trust me, you're not going to see Birds of Prey on my list, so. What's your number five? Wonder Woman. Came out in 2017. You didn't watch it until like 2021, um, I think. Then, right? Yeah, I didn't watch it until years later. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I liked it. Uh, Gal Gadot, uh, directed by a woman. What's her name? Patty Jenkins. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I liked it. The action was good. Uh, I think it was like one of the first. One of the initials. One of the initial DCU movies. Um, yeah, number five. Number four for me is Aquaman, first Aquaman, uh, directed by James Wan. It was really, really good because that was one of his first. Su- that was one, his first superhero movie. Yeah, that's my number directed. four too. Uh, also number four. Yeah, <laughs> my number four. Yeah, I I think Jason Momoa's Aquaman. That was a good pick. That I think was good. That good was casting. Good. good casting on their parts. I think what I feel really bad because if it came out after Justice League came out. Yeah. And I think a lot of people had have, have mixed feelings about him as Aquaman. Mm-hmm. But then this came out, and then it was just like, oh, yeah, dude, he's great as Aquaman. Fucking, uh, what's his name? Black Manta. Yeah. Fucking laser. The, the CGI was good. The costume uh, for the Black costume. Manta was super yeah, accurate. Dude. I loved it. I didn't think they would pull it off. The big ass head. <laughs> but they did it. Uh, it's also the highest grossing uh, DCEU movie. So one, far, currently. $1.1 1. 1 billion. Jeez. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Aquaman. <laughs> Fuck Amber Heard. <laughs> all the action in it was sick. I like the battle towards the end where it's just <clears throat> all these undersea tribes. Okay, a lot of people like to mock this movie for being basically Black Panther but under the sea. 
which is interesting because now Black Panther the sequel <laughs> brought in Namor, Namor. <laughs> and the Atlantis basically. So it's like, okay, cool. But I think the way they they establish everything, the lore, all of that stuff, the action, the, there was like a horror scene. Remember where he's going through that trench yeah. uh, and all these like these crazy like sea creature piranhas basically are fucking gonna kill him. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that stuff he did really well too. So I just think overall, Aquaman was a really really good solid action movie. Um, and I just I, I I don't see any problem. I didn't I never saw any real problems with no, it. No. I liked it all the way through. Uh, what's your number four? My number is Aquaman. Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> My number Sorry. three. What's your number three? Is uh, Justice League. Justice 20, League. Yep. 2017. It's not on my list. Zack Snyder. You didn't have Justice League on your list? No. no absolutely Zack not. Snyder. Wait. Justice League Snyder Cut or Justice League Original uh, Cut? I'll do the Snyder Cut. Okay. okay. Uh, so you're saying... See, that movie was so long. It was like <laughs> three and a half hours. Or it took me two days to watch that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's like the Avengers. Uh, it was wasn't it panned by by critics? The original, cut? yeah, yeah. The original. Uh, I mean, I still liked it. I like uh, ensemble movies like that involving superheroes. Um, I don't care if it's bad or not. <laughs> I just think it's such a cool uh, trope uh, for heroes to get together and save the world. Uh, that's why it's my number three. Just too many low points for me. There, I was. I, I just it was a little bother. slow too, and then it was a little slow, and then it was a little fast because they had to bring everything together. <laughs> but it was fun. The idea of reviving Superman and burying, like you know, getting a shovel and digging him out of his grave was was a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, that was weird as hell. I, I don't know. They're very interesting choices they made. The bat, the Batman Apocalypse Nightmare yeah. sequence yeah. with uh, the Joker. They were they were planning so much, but they did too much to put them. They shoved into this movie. Yeah. Right? It was just, and I think that's what really really fucked up the DCEU is that once Justice League came out and they said, "Oh shit, all of this is falling apart," and now we have to make these individual movies. And what what did, what came out of it? This no sequel for Man of Steel, no. Uh, a terrible sequel for Wonder Woman, which I still haven't seen. 1984. I, I mean, the trailer looked great. Pedro Pascal is the the bad guy. And oh, yeah. I, I still haven't seen it, but everybody's told me, do not watch it because it ruins a lot of the what the first one established. Speaking of the first one, Wonder Woman is my number three. I, 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 I watched it when it first came out in theaters. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. I And I like to argue that this is probably a better World War like like a world war superhero movie like a war superhero movie that Captain America didn't say, really they establish kind of tried, they kind of tried with Captain America yeah but i think like with Captain America it was more like oh it's more about Captain America and not how he in the context of the war yeah. wonder woman was wonder woman if she was straight up in world war 1 or what is it world war yeah world war 1 yeah. trench warfare you see all this hor like these horrible things that are happening, and it just puts it into the context of a Wonder Woman story, and I thought it was really, really good. My favorite part is when she does kill that general, and nothing changes. Yeah. Because she thinks, oh, if I just kill this general, the war... Everything's going to be The okay. war is going to be okay. <laughs> no, no humanity. Apparently, this guy was going to like control all these like pe German forces and all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just... But then it's just like, no, it doesn't matter. You mm. fucking kill him. And, and then it, it turns out the God of War was involved, yeah. which I thought was cool. That's I don't know why everybody thought – everybody crazy. hates the last part of the of Wonder Woman's movie with uh, where he's just like getting all this – like she's having this epic fight with him. But I still thought that's the emotional aspect of it. Chris Pine's sacrifice, you know, Wonder Woman's girl, boyfriend, boyfriend, sacrifice his gang of like, you know – world you know of this his gang of like people I, who, who the fuck remembers dum dum dugan from uh dum -dum -dum -dum. captain america no no one he just had a crew of you know of of these like war people and they're they're all fighting together no it was always a captain america we never got to really know the other characters yeah. and this one i just felt like okay cool they're doing like a spy infiltrate into the castle yeah, this yeah. and that and i just thought well, cool i'm getting to know more of these characters they're funny they're entertaining yeah and i just thought okay yep yeah, I'm sorry, uh, between Wonder Woman or Captain America, and I love Captain America, the movies, Wonder Woman did a right for their for their first movie as far as like that kind of time period. Yeah, war movie. period. Yeah. So what's your number two? My number two is The Suicide Squad, uh, the newer one. Uh, honestly, dude, I like the older one too, but the newer one uh, takes the cake for my number two. Um, that was James Gunn, right? 
James Gunn. James Gunn, introduction to the DC Universe. He did everything so much better. No offense to... Who directed the first one? <laughs> it's the guy who uh, who made uh, End of Watch and... Uh, What's that Will Smith movie with the pitch? No. <laughs> the... the, uh, the where it's like the orcs are basically, you know, gangsters. Oh, uh... I was going to say arcane, but it's not arcane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Blight. Bright. Bright, bright, bright. bright. Yeah, that's the director. I, I saw that movie. That was a good one, too. But anyways, Suicide Squad, James Gunn, did everything right. Um, Joker? Was Joker in it? No, that no, was right? the, that was, okay, that yeah, was the first. Okay, yeah, I'm mixing them up. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> They're blending together. Dude, I know. Yeah, all these... these but I think James Gunn did it better in terms of action, in terms of comedy. Uh, Idris Elba is my boy. I love him. Uh, the addition of all these kooky characters, the weasel, polka dot man, uh, Rat King too. This was R-rated Guardians of the Galaxy. R-rated. But extended cast. Yeah. And so. I just like when they put uh, kooky characters like that in the movie. And it worked. The action was sick. Uh, even the side characters, like uh, Steve Agee's character, Comic Relief, he was just like an agent. Brought Amanda Waller back, uh, Viola Davis. Uh, I liked her as uh That's one thing I'll criticize about that movie, is that it underutilized Amanda Waller a little bit. I, I kind of wish she had more of a presence. <laughs> she was mostly on a computer screen. Yeah. I liked them. Didn't they knock her out or something? Yeah, they, they knock her out, which I thought was kind of a... Like a like a ding on her. I was like, really? Yeah. Like, I mean, you, you, sh- you shouldn't expect these like people to like betray you and all this shit. I don't know. That kind of annoyed me. But other than that, it, it as a movie, it was really really well well put together. And I think definitely shows it it, it shows that if you let the director do it, uh, do their movie how they want to do it, while also them being interested and enjoying that source material, and it comes together, it works. It works. And we also got a really good TV show out of it, Peacemaker. Yeah. So I thought, yeah. man, that was good. And we were really expecting it to, like, I think a lot of people were expecting it to fail because it's like, wow, they're really putting a lot of money into this and it just doesn't seem, like, there's too many characters and this and that. And I, But I, I think it ended up working out and I, I really love it yeah. for what it is. Yeah. Number two is for me is Man of Steel. Yeah. Do you have Man of Steel on your list at all? What? I just thought of Black Adam too. But I, I, don't, I don't think I would put that on my list. <laughs> Definitely not my Yeah, Man of Steel. Man of Steel, incredible. That was like the first one, right? Yeah. First DC. It started, it it was supposed to start at all. And unfortunately, a lot of what Man of Steel did, just it felt like they kind of back, like pedaled backwards because they're just like, man, Man of Steel was great. Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill as Superman. Perfect Superman. I think the cast overall was very well executed. Like everybody had their roles and they executed it well. Lawrence Fishburne, we all keep forgetting, is the, what was his name, uh, the, what do you call it, the head of the newspaper, of the Daily, Daily Planet. Bugle. Daily Bugle. Daily Bugle. Daily Planet. <laughs> Planet. Daily Planet. Daily Bugle is, super, is Spider-Man. Spider-Man, okay. <laughs> so, and then we have Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Zod. Oh. Dude, the fighting in that movie was so sick. So the, so the action was is a big part of why I, this movie is on my list because I think they did it very well. They they showed a great scale. Oh yeah, I was gonna say they really played with the scale. They fucked up the entire city. Yep, you could feel all the people dying. The horror. Obviously, they didn't show it, but <laughs> a lot of people probably died. The malice, the craziness. Oh I, yeah, it was a very it That's was a very sick. interesting like interpretation of Superman, and I I think. Because it went that way, and because Zack Snyder had some clear direction with it, it went really well. And I think it is pretty much, oh man, the Watchmen of super of Superman movies. And I think it was, but it was less. I think as pretentious as it is, because there's a lot of moments where it's like, oh, obviously Superman in this metaphor is Jesus. And I yeah. think a lot of people like you know like to clown on it for it. But I, I just think no. I think as far as how it it showed itself in the film, I think it did a lot more for Superman than it than it hurt, you know. And I thought, as far as origin movies, I thought this was a good origin movie yeah. for Superman, for sure. Number one for me is the Suicide Squad, and because we already talked about it, I wanted to talk about it as well. Uh, the Suicide Squad, I think it made it made me like a lot of characters from the first movie mm-hmm. that I hated. Mm-hmm. Like for example, uh, what's his name? The the guy who played the rebooted of RoboCop. This is uh, oh, he's uh, leading the Suicide Squad. 
Fuck. I, I always forget their names. Flag. Rick Flag. Rick Flag. So I, I hate I, I hated him in the first movie. I thought he was the did, most. Did they boring. use the same actor? Yeah. Okay. I was, I was wondering because <laughs> I feel like he looked skinnier in the first one, and then he looked buffed in this one. Mm, you've seen better days. Yeah. But I, I just think if you're able to, as a director, you're able to recontextualize a character from yeah, the first movie true. and bring him into the second movie. That's not even related. As a more likable and understanding character, then yeah. And then kill him and make you feel like, oh, shit, dude, this guy died. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, incredible. Even Captain Boomerang, he was in there for five minutes in the plane. Yeah. And I... I, you know what? Captain Boomerang in Suicide Squad. They use the same actor too, right? Yeah. Guy Ritchie? Yeah. Not Guy Ritchie. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking idiot. I don't guy <laughs> something. It's not Guy. It is. It's not Guy. Then what is it? It's not Guy. Captain Boomerang. No, look it up right now. Jai. Jai Courtney. Jai Courtney. Thank you. I was close. Yes. But Jai Courtney is a good actor. So I thought bringing him in and then only to kill them off in the first like 10 minutes was... I... I it was good because I was like, okay, cool. There actually are stakes in this. And James Gunn did a good job in understanding it. Some of these characters will die. And then like Polka yeah. Dot Man died too. Yeah, yeah. One of the more likable characters. It's, and it's just, he hmm. did raise the stakes, but also kind of grounded these characters because that's the hard part with Suicide Squad is a lot of these characters are pretty much, they, they, they've killed people. They've, they've eaten babies. They've yeah. genocided like, a bunch of like cities and stuff like that and he's able to contextualize them in a way where it's like all right we're gonna kill the ones that are clearly horrible people but at the same time the ones that are horrible people um like for example Idris Elba's character who put Superman in the ICU yeah. he, they still contextualize them with like a daughter and all this other no, stuff yeah a lot better than the first movie so yeah. I think that's why I liked the Suicide Squad it established so much and yet it was it was always about the characters, no matter what. It yeah. was never about the act. It, fuck, this could have had one or two action, like decent action scenes, but they gave us like four or five, yeah. and it would have been it would have been great because of how well he understood these characters. Yeah. So, what's your number one? My number one is Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice, released in 2016, starring Ben Sorry, Affleck and Henry Cavill. I remember the lead up to this movie was so fucking hype. I played a part in the hype. I remember, uh, I think it was a Comic Con or something. They just showed the logo, bro, the Bat logo inside the Superman logo. Everybody's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, granted, when it came out, it was uh, mediocre, uh, but I liked it. Um, How many times do you think you've seen it now? Three or four, <laughs> twice. I saw the extended version. Mm, Actually, I don't think I've seen that, one. that helps. It helped. It helped a lot. Uh, the story. Ben Affleck, underrated Batman. He's a fucking monster. I love his take on Batman. It's just buff, fucking grizzled, like damaged. Uh, and his voice modulator makes him sound badass. We got to see his uh, the, his anti-Superman suit. Uh, we got to see Batman and Superman fight. Uh, got a little silly at times. Uh, it's like the WWE of... of Fucking DC movies. Martha. Remember when he said Martha? And then he <laughs> just so happens to be Superman's <laughs> mom's name, too. Right. Um, but uh, all in all, the action was sick. I wouldn't say it lived up to the hype, but for me personally, uh, it was very action packed. I remember seeing it with my friends. I remember talking about it, being up to the release. Um, and I think it's like the second, still the second highest grossing uh, DC movie, uh, 875 million or. or yeah, eight hundred seventy-five million or something like that. Right. I think with with that said, a lot of these movies, I'm noticing it's just you could tell there was some kind of like underlying like like they wanted to make this okay superheroes if they were in the real world, mm. and I think that's what a lot of people didn't <sighs> like about the DCU is that it was too much trying to go for grounded grounded reality yeah. when they could have went not. a little goofier. I yeah. think and I think that's why I like the Suicide Squad is because it, yeah, yeah. It, it did it became less about reality yeah. and it became more about the characters. Yeah. They didn't really take and, themselves seriously. And that's really unfortunate because when it when they did do that, it it worked it was very effective emotionally. But when they did it and it wasn't effective, it was kind of like Oh, you're trying to be too dark for the sake of yeah. being dark. Uh, I think though, I think pretentious. James Gunn is going to pull it off. He's going to bring that charm. That and that's a shame because I really do like Zack Snyder's what what, what yeah. he was planning and everything. But yeah. I think at the end of the day, it's gone. It's it's not. It's it wasn't going to be what we wanted it to be. And... Didn't he say he's never going to work on a superhero movie again or something? Really? 
I think he said something like that. Don't quote me on that. That's a real shame. I think he said he's tired of superhero movies or something. The Watchmen was good, bro. I, um, I love that movie. I, I should have put it on my list. Well, it's not DC. It's not oh, DC. yeah, it's not DC. Yeah. <laughs> Would be interesting, though, because if you've seen the new line of... Uh, the show sucked. And did you try watching? Yeah, I think I saw like one or two episodes. Mm. Not my thing. Well, they did make it clear that it wasn't going to be part of anything. Yeah, but I like the Watchmen movie, so I was like, oh, maybe the show will be decent. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Do you know that in the newest line of like comics, isn't like the Watchmen like getting uh, into the DC yeah, 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 universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wouldn't it be interesting if they somehow, mm. and of course, if, if they fuck up enough movies again, they're just like, all right, guys, let's bring in the Watchmen. Let's bring back Zack Snyder. I'm sure he'll want to do let's one. Do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. Run it back. How many times are they going to do this before they decide we're going to run out of money and we should stop trying? I mean, they're well, still he... making money. Dude. Well, that's the thing. Batman Superman versus... and Batman movies, regardless of what what the quality of is, they're going to do really. Just they're going to they're going to make a lot of money. Quick analysis: uh, Batman versus Superman, eight hundred and seventy-three million. Wonder Woman, eight hundred and twenty-one million. Uh, Justice League, six hundred and fifty-seven million. Damn, talk about a fucking flop. <laughs> Highest grossing was Aquaman with 1.1. So, I mean, there's a fair share of money coming in, but uh, like you said, you can't just keep making shitty ass movies. <laughs> so, then you'll run out of money. Right. So, we'll see what do, uh, with Blue Beetle. Uh, oh, that's good. <laughs> Even if it's good, we, we, uh, it, if, if it's not good for the rest of the world, I'm sure they're going to.